Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Industry Unfiltered with myself, Adam Smith. Delighted to say on the podcast this week, Sharky, big influencer, YouTuber, obviously part of the beta squad as well. Uh, we share a lot in common. D- differences in terms of the football teams we support. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, do we share? <laughs> that one we don't share, yeah. Tottenham Arsenal, but very happy that you're on the pod, mate. And again, giving up your time to travel mm-hmm. here. So thank you very much. No, Are you looking for forward me, to bro. this? I am looking forward to it. You know, like, I love talking. I love um, having conversations, you know, about anything. So yeah. I'm definitely looking forward to it, bro. Mate, brilliant to have you on. Let's start where it all began. Then we always ask this with all our guests, sort of your childhood, your growing up. Because you actually grew up in the Netherlands, didn't you? Is that right? So I didn't I, I didn't grow up there. I was born there. Oh, right. So I was born in the Netherlands. And uh, my family moved over here when I was like a baby, like two years old. Okay. So I grew up here my whole life. Yeah. But I still have a Dutch passport. Do you? you still have a Dutch <laughs> yeah, passport? Yeah, I still have a Dutch passport. But like, I've, I've lived there my whole life. I don't speak a word of Dutch. Don't you? No, but a lot of my family do. My grandparents live there. Like, so a lot of my But cousins you don't speak, speak any Dutch? No. I mean, when people are speaking Dutch around me, I understand a little bit. Right. But I don't speak any Dutch. I, I've Ever any plans life. to learn Dutch? No, I mean, I don't think so. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's not like a language that like, a lot of people speak. No, it's not, is so it? So it's like, it feels like Spanish, you know? You, you do that, yeah. I, like, I'd want to learn it. Yeah. And, and um, I am learning it a little bit, but Dutch is a bit... I don't know. Maybe if I go back there more often. Yeah. Then maybe. Fair enough. Oldest bit. of seven siblings, is that right? Yes. So how, how was that growing up? Busy household, I take it. Busy, busy, very busy household. Of course, like, seven kids already is crazy. And then imagine they're all younger than me as well. So it's yeah. like... Oldest of stacks, like, big responsibility. You know? Do you and feel that then, dear? You feel like you got the Of course, even yeah. more so because obviously, like, it was like a single parent household. Like, my mum was a single right. mum. So it's like, and I'm the oldest son. Wow. So kind of like a second dad kind of thing. Yeah, did you feel that so, then? You um, had like a responsibility, father yeah. figure type. For yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. I mean, I still feel that now, but now it's like, I'm a lot older. So I actually yeah. could fulfill the role a bit better. But I was like 16 playing a second, like a, a second dad, you know what I mean? It was a bit, yeah. it was a bit tough, but nah, it was good, man. It's good. Um, yeah, all my siblings are growing up now, which is sick. It's weird to see as well. Is it? Yeah, they're all growing up, but yeah, man, it's cool. Love that, mate. Love that. And yeah. in terms of when you were growing up, like what, what did you want to become? Because obviously you're you're smashing it now in, in the sort of YouTube world, but yeah. it seems we've had so many guests on this podcast that sort of say they've sort of fell into YouTube or, or it, what was your sort of mindset back then? Yeah, no, generally that literally is me. Like I fell, in, really? I fell into it. I... Like just like any other kid, I wanted to be a football player. Mate, they, we all did. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I, I knee want, injury, yeah? But it's like, <laughs> it's actually, not you. Yeah, yeah, no, mine wasn't a knee injury. I just wasn't good enough. Um, to be fair, we play in a few celebrity soccer matches. Yeah. You're actually not bad at all. Half yeah. decent. Yeah, I grew up playing like, good a, a good level. I grew up playing at a good level. Um, but yeah, no, I just wanted to be a football player growing up, just like any other kid. Hmm. I got the opportunity to actually... Um, play at a good decent level when I was like 16 <clears throat> I did some trials yeah um, I got into like a college program which was actually affiliated by Spurs and I get grilled for that all the time on social media because there's pictures of me still like yeah. of me and Spurs kids um but when you when you're trying to become a football player doesn't matter who you support like yeah. how many footballers now in the Premier League support the rival yeah good point. Arsenal good point you know what I mean? well, does he well <laughs> he does we all know he does <laughs> Let's not out, I've got a list of <laughs> Darren Ben <laughs> Harry he's, Kane he's pre- this is all his prep for the pod <laughs> battering me like, about Spurs but, but obviously like obviously it's like I get to play football at a good level it wasn't it was the step just below the academy so it wasn't the academy I never played for the academy mm. but uh, it was like the like a lot of players from a few players from my system went through to the academy yeah like a feeder, feeder it was club. like a feeder kind yeah, of thing yeah. but it was like a college programme as well yeah so I did that for two years and it was the best two years of my life and um, really enjoyed it. Got to like have some great experiences, travel around the country, wow. play some cool matches. And then when it got to the end of college, obviously only a few a few of the players got some like contracts. Yeah. Like, some are still playing in the system now, like League One players, League yeah. Two players that I played with. Obviously I wasn't one of them. There were so many of us. It just happens. And I just kind of fell into YouTube that summer. Yeah. I mean, I was just, I wasn't someone who grew up watching YouTube that much. Like for mm. me, YouTube was like music videos. Football highlights. I know what you mean. It's like, changed. Like back in the day, it was yeah, different, wasn't it? But, yeah. But, but people like KSI was around and the Sidemen were around, yeah. but I just wasn't in that like world of watching. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I knew about F2 because I was a football guy. Yeah, yeah. Joe Weller because of like his internet yeah. melts. And that was literally it. Yeah. And then I just suddenly started watching Spencer FC and then I wanted to become a YouTuber. Wow. Yeah. So t- two things I want to pick up on that. With, with the football, yeah. best two years of your life, you said. Did, did you yeah. think at any point you would become like maybe League Two, League One. Did you think that level was a possibility and it was gutted when it was taken away from you? Or did you know that the players that made it were on a different level? Yeah, yeah, it was, one, it was, it was, it was more the second one. Like, was it? I was good, but I was like, there was like a difference in like, I was good and I was like, I, I played at a good level when I was yeah. always, but I was like another player in the team. I was never like the star right, player, okay. you know? And you could see like, there was like, I was some of the friends I was close with, they were like, 
not just the best player on our team though, like the best player in the league that yeah, we played yeah. in, you know? And um, and like some of the players that we played in the league was sick. Like I always remember uh, Paul Merson's son was in our league, Sam Merson. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable player. Yeah. Unbelievable player. So it's like, those are the kind of players that were playing in the same yeah. league as me. And I was like, these guys are different caliber. Like I'm just yeah. here to have fun. Obviously I was trying hard, but I kind of knew pretty early on after these two years, it's like, it's probably not going to be, I maybe could have played in like high non-league level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but obviously but it just wasn't wasn't meant to be. It's mad you said about um, Sam actually, because I so tried good. to sign Paul's other son, Ben Merson, oh, really? for my Sunday league team a few years back because he oh. worked at Sky and he, he he played at a much better level than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I do know what you mean because I, I used to play an all right level back in the day yeah. and then you play like combined counties or like the, yeah, yeah, where, you, where you went to like FA Cup prelims and then you play a better team and the standard is so much better mm. and it's there, there are levels to it, aren't of there? Course. You could just see, you know, you could yeah. just tell exactly, you could just see and I actually got into football pretty late actually so mm. I was already behind like I was very impressed with how far I got in that short space of time because I yeah. didn't play. For, I only played for my first ever Sunday league team at like fifteen. Did you? Yeah, people play at eight. Wow! Because of the whole like single parent thing. Yeah. Like my mum had six other kids. She couldn't take me to football. And yeah. Stuff. Like I didn't have that father figure that was taking me to football when I was seven years old and yeah, stuff. So okay. I had to. Like I love football. I played for my school teams and stuff. But yeah. outside of school, I haven't. I didn't join the team since I was fifteen. Yeah, wow. Because that was fifteen was the age where I could go by myself. Yeah, got you. Got to you. games and take yeah. myself to game. Yeah. Uh, take myself to training and stuff. Yeah. So imagine starting football like like, prefer, like not professional Sunday league football at yeah, like yeah. fifteen. Yeah, you're behind the development. I'm playing at college yeah. program. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. That seems you're saying there that that you, you knew that it wasn't ever a profession because you knew your own ability. So yeah. in terms of where YouTube started, you said you weren't into YouTube, but Spencer was your first sort of inspiration. He was Is that my, right? Yeah, he was my introduction to like this whole UK YouTube fo fo FIFA football yeah. space. Like I didn't even know much at all, and it was a summer, and I was like obviously just finished college, debating to go to uni or not. I, was, I didn't want to go to uni, but my yeah. mom, I had a lot of pressure from my mom because I was the oldest child. I had Did to go you? to uni. Yeah. And I just started watching YouTube videos because I was bored. And uh, I came across Spencer. I said it so many times. It was a Zarati kid series. Mauro Zarati, yeah, yeah. the fifth worst time. Yeah. Spencer Owen had a Ultimate Team series. And I was watching that. And within a month of me watching Spencer and getting hooked, that's when he started the first ever Wembley Cup. Wow. Yeah, and I was like, wait, YouTubers are playing at Wembley Stadium. Yeah. Like, what the hell is this? So you couldn't comprehend that at the time. I couldn't comprehend it. You yeah. know, so I'm watching it. I'm like, this is me wanting to be a footballer. Yeah. Now I'm seeing YouTubers are playing at Wembley yeah. Stadium. I'm like, that's yeah. the next best thing, you know? Yeah. And then that's when he did like, it was Spencer FC versus Sidemen FC. Then I started getting to know the YouTube characters. Like I started watching more of other YouTubers, Chris MD. I, yeah. I started see, like seeing them through the Wembley Cup series. Yeah, interesting. And then within another month after that, I just made my first video. Yeah. What was it about Spencer that obviously, mm. I mean, like we've, we've had him on, I think he's so, so clever in terms of seeing what comes next and knowing when to start a new project. I mean, hashtag United, the, the story of that. And he, he went insane. into amazing detail about how he engineered that actually, which is really interesting. But what was it about him that stood out compared to, because there's so many YouTubers mm. out there. What was it about him that was so special? I don't know. I just felt, like I just got hooked really quickly. I don't know. I just felt comfortable watching him. Like it wasn't, like now, obviously, every everyone streamers, YouTubers, they're all like huge characters. Yeah. You know, they're screaming at their uh, their TVs, yes. their cameras, and it works. You know, it's yeah. great. And I'm 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 in that world, so I understand it. But Spencer was the perfect introduction for me because he wasn't like someone that's gonna scream and shout at mm. the camera. He was a bit more mature. Yeah. Um, but it was like, I don't know. I just was watching his videos and I really enjoyed. They're well made and his concepts were fun. He had obviously the Zarate kid where it was like following one player yeah. and all that stuff or the Wheel of Foot June, which is like, yeah. they had a spinning wheel every a lot time. Of props, you know, it? like yeah. props and stuff. So I was, yeah. like, I was like, this is really, this is actually really cool. And it's FIFA and I like FIFA and it's like kind of yeah. like a twist. Um, I don't know, I just really, I don't know, I just really enjoyed Just connected it. with him. Yeah, so, connected so in terms of then when your journey started, how quick after that were you then saying, right, I need to make YouTube videos? Literally within like a month or really? a month and a half. Yeah, wow. I've always been like that where if I have, if I, want, if I have an idea, I'll just start it straight away. I don't yeah. want to wait seven months to try and build it in the background. I'll just start yeah. it and then just build it as I'm going. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I literally just started it pretty soon after. I didn't own a camera. I didn't own, know how to edit or nothing. But one of my closest friends, he had a camera for, he used for photography. And I knew he had a camera. And I was like, he knows, he's pretty creative. He knows how to use Photoshop and stuff. He knows yeah. how to edit photos. So yeah. he must know how to edit videos. <laughs> So I was like, hey, bro, I want to film a video. Can I come to your house? And I had to use his house. Did you? Because my house is too loud. I had so much siblings. Yeah. So I went to his house, <laughs> used his camera, and he edited my first ever video. Wow. Yeah. And that was that when you did like FIFA gameplay vids and that blogs and stuff? That was a FIFA stuff. video. Yeah. It was like a forfeit FIFA where every time you conceded, you had to eat a chili or yeah. it was a dumb... Yeah, yeah. 
Dumb game. But that was all done because you didn't have, you see, you didn't know how to edit, didn't know how to film or anything like that. So you're relying on SD card was. Really? Yeah. Wow. So that's really interesting, that, actually, because we have people that listen to this and watch this that obviously a lot of people want to be YouTubers or get in there. But a lot of people, there's a lot of creatives that work behind the scenes as well. So yeah. it's interesting you saying that you were leaning on your mate. So he's done your first video. Then, yeah. then what happens to video two and three and four? After the first video, obviously no fault of his own because it's, it's, he's doing me a favour. But yeah. it's, he, he took him like three weeks to edit the video. And I was <laughs> right. getting impatient. I'm like, but I can't <laughs> yeah. get angry at him because he's doing me a favour. <laughs> And you, were you paying him for this? Or? No, no. Just just friend, I'm saying, so I'm like, we filmed and, I, and the video didn't come out for like another three weeks. And I'm like, this is too long. So I just- but thanks. Yeah, but thanks. <laughs> yeah. So I just had like a beat down heavy laptop that was like, make so much noise every time you turn it on like, with a fan. But I just told myself- <laughs> no, you I'd, made, I know you Yeah, made. but I just taught myself how to edit. Like yeah. I just um, you? went on YouTube and I just I downloaded a software. And then I just was watching YouTube tutorials and I just taught myself how to edit. Yeah. It wasn't great, but it was, enough, it was good enough to be able to upload videos. Like, yeah. Cut, 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 put music here, put music there. And then obviously just from there on, I was editing my own videos. It's a great point that actually, because like back in the day when I started in TV, it was like you'd sit in an edit suite, you'd watch an editor, and then you, it was like a long, slow process, mm -hmm. which is great now because you, I have an appreciation of having been in a gallery to know graphics, directing, producing. It's, it's helped me as a presenter, yeah, yeah. but it, it's it's a lot of a harder, long way around. But what's great now for people that want to become editors or camera operators, you can self-teach yourself. Yeah. On YouTube, can't you? Yeah, exactly, exactly what you did, right? Literally, yeah. literally, yeah. Just everything, anything you want to learn almost is on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's all online. If it's not on YouTube, it's somewhere else online. Yeah. Like, everything's there. Um, but yeah, I just taught myself how to edit and then just kept on improving. Yeah. Because the more you want, the next video you make, you want to maybe add a bit of a spin to the edit, yeah. add this transition. You get gassed over a little transition. Yeah, You're yeah. like, oh my God, this is a little swipe across so the screen. True. Like, it's like, and then you really like start to enjoy it and you learn and you learn and you learn. But yeah, I mean, that was my first ever video. It was like a FIFA video. My friend edited it. And then while I had one video on my channel, that's when I came across Chunks online. Yeah, so that was about a month into your YouTube journey, right? You met Chunks for the first time, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had one I had one video on my channel. He had two. He had two. Wow, so that is he only had two on his he channel? He had two and I had one. We but literally, wow. we didn't know each other existed or nothing. And we both uploaded our first ever YouTube video on August 2015. So the same date? Not the same date, same month. Same month, sorry. August yeah. 2015. Yeah. Um, like, we're both from the same area. Yeah. Both the same age. Both from the same country. Yeah. Like, it was crazy. Like, yeah. it was insane. But, um, yeah, I had one video on my channel, so I just started YouTube. And um, a mutual friend of ours who's now, like, still very close to us, he's, he's a member of my podcast, Ilias. Yeah. He, we, I knew him on, I didn't know him in person, but I, I followed him on Twitter. Yeah. Because we had, like, a lot of mutual friends. And Ilias knew Chunks as well. And then I was on Twitter one day and then Ilias retweeted a YouTube video, which happened to be Chunks' video. Right, right. So I clicked on the video because it was something like FIFA forfeit, similar to what so I similar did. content to what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. like, yeah, football versus FIFA, something like that. Yeah. And uh, I clicked on the video and straight away I recognized someone in Chunks' video. Right. Because I knew him from like when I was younger. Right. And I was like, what the hell? I know Small this kid. World, you know, yeah. I know this kid. It wasn't Chunks who I knew, but it was someone else. So I messaged, and I checked Chunk's channel, he had two videos. So I messaged him, I said, uh, my first ever DM to him was, yo bro, is the guy in your video so-and-so? He's like, yeah, why? I said, oh, I know him. He's like, okay, sick. And I was like, wow. I was like, I saw you have two two videos on your channel. Like, that's mad. I just thought YouTube as well, blah, blah, where are you from? He said, like, he told me where he's from, like Wembley area. I said, no yeah. way, so am I. From that first conversation, we realized that we live 10 minutes from each other. We have so much mutual friends. Yeah. We just didn't know each other. Wow. And um, yeah, we just. And what, what sort of subs count were you, were you both on then? Like uh, We were on like 100 each. Really? 100, so 100 it's literally the start of the literally journey. The start. Like, and like in, less it, than 200 subs. Wow. Is yeah. he someone that straight away that you hit it off with then? Like straight in terms away. of how much you had in common? Because he's such a genuine guy, Chance, yeah, yeah. isn't he? Straight, straight away. Straight away. I mean, uh, he was working in the cinema. He was working in the cinema. Yeah, I remember. And like, I remember seeing a video yeah, recently, actually. Yeah, he was working at mm -hmm. Cineworld, but then obviously the Cineworld was linked to a Starbucks. Yeah. So it's like Cineworld employees had like Starbucks discounts and everything. So <laughs> I remember when I first met him, it was like, like one of the first times I met him. And we're like 19 years old, you know, didn't really have much money. And this guy came, like this guy bought me co like bought me a tea or yeah. hot chocolate, whatever I think it was. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know this guy. Like for me, that was so big. I'm like, yeah. how are you, he's buying me a hot chocolate? Yeah. Like, I don't know the guy. Like he doesn't know me. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And for me, it's like to buy someone like, Three pound is a lot of money back yeah, then. Yeah, you know? yeah. So I was like, this guy is such a genuine guy. And then um, yeah. straight away we hit, yeah, we hit off. The first video we ever made together, he cut my like he shaved my head. 
Yeah. And they cut my hair for a video. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, so it's like, we we literally got on super quick. Like, and and ha looking back on it, how influential was meeting Chunks in your YouTube journey, would you say? My, um, it was everything. I don't think I'd still be doing YouTube if I didn't. Really? So you don't, you'd very, still be like, doing YouTube if you'd never met Chunks? Yeah. Well, yeah, of course, because it's like a whole, like, lots of steps. But mm. I was like very, and I still am like, I was very like, I'll start something a couple months later, I'll stop it and start yeah. something else. Like just before YouTube, me and my friend started like a football blog website. It would like do match reports and yeah. stuff. And then I stopped that like a month later and then I started YouTube. So it's like, if I didn't meet anyone and I was like two more months of doing YouTube by myself, editing my own videos, trying to get mm. my friends. And it's like, it felt like a chore because they were my friends who weren't into YouTube. They're just my normal friends. Right. Hey, let's come to a football pitch right, and film yeah. a football video. Yeah. And they're like, cool, when I'll film it. But then I have the same passion as me. They're just coming to help me out. Yeah. After a while, that becomes a chore. Yeah. I probably would have stopped it within a couple months. But me and Chunks had the same passion as me. Yeah. And it's not a chore to go, yeah, let's film a video. Because I'll film a video and he'll film a video straight after. Yeah. So we're doing it together. So that's why we carried on. But I think if I didn't meet him, probably two, three months later, I probably would have stopped. You might have stopped, yeah. It's yeah. interesting there that you, you collaborated early because a big part of why certain YouTubers get so big. Because I think I feel like now yeah. a lot of people want to be YouTubers compared to like when you were saying yourself five, ten years ago, even yourself, who's yeah. a massive YouTuber, wasn't really into YouTube mm -hmm. because there was there was so many different things. Whereas now I feel like a huge part of the younger generation wants to be YouTubers. But yeah. we all see the top 1%, you, KSI, Chunks, but there's the 99% who, who don't make it. It's, it's very difficult to get to the level that you two are at. It is a big part of where you're at now, the fact that you started on the journey together and actually you were collaborating almost before collaborating was a thing, right? Yeah, literally. Like That is literally the whole reason why we are where we're at now because yeah. we're so fortunate where it wasn't just me and Chunks because very uh, very soon after that, because AJ got involved, yeah. AJ and Chunks worked together in the cinema. Yeah, wow. Yeah, so then AJ got, AJ got involved and then another friend of ours got involved and suddenly, we were collaborating so often. Like, yeah. It was like, I would go to Chunks' house because that, that's where we'd film all our videos, his house. We'd go to Chunks' house. We'd all have our own SD cards. We'd use the same camera. That's you amazing. know, As long as it's charged up, we'd have a light in. And then I'd, like, we'd come, we'd sit down and then we'd all come with a video idea. So I'd put my SD card in the camera. Yeah. Me, Chunks and AJ, whoever's there, yeah. we'd film a video, quiz forfeits, guess the song, these little quick yeah. videos to yeah, film. Yeah. We'll film it 20 minute filming session, guess a song. If you don't get a song right, you get a next slap, whatever. Just funny yeah, videos. Yeah. We didn't have money to get props and stuff. It was just us being like funny. Yeah. My video's finished. I do the outro. Thanks guys for watching. Bye. Take my SD card out. AJ puts his SD card in. He's got his video idea. We reshuffle. AJ sits in the middle now. We film his video. He takes SD card out. Chunks does his. Bang. We've just, three hours later, we've all got a video. Yeah. We go home, we all edit our videos, we all release our videos. Now suddenly, we're all in each other's videos. So if my video yeah, picks clever. up and does well, clever. now people want to go watch their channel. So if one of us grows fast, then the others will mm. grow with them because we're all in each other's videos. And we do that all the time. Yeah. We go to each other's houses. We do rap battles. We do just random videos. Yeah. It's very clever that, yeah. but also quite forward thinking for, for back yeah. then as well, because I feel like a lot of people are doing it now, but mm. to all recognize. And I think what's great about you, obviously I know you, Chunks, and a lot of the boys really well is that there doesn't seem to be any sort of competitiveness about individual channels. You, you genuinely mm. are really happy for Chunks and he's genuinely really happy for you. You seem to have like a really strong bond, which actually mm. in this industry can be quite rare, can't it? When there's a lot of people vying for followers yeah. or subs or, yeah. or roles. Do you know what I mean? Like that, that, there is a genuine love there between you two, isn't there? I mean, yeah, that's probably just because like we we started together. Yeah. You know, it's like literally it's like, hundred subs each. Yeah. So now to see him hitting four million on Instagram Man. is crazy to me. Yeah. You know, it's like when he hit a hundred thousand subscribers, I was crying with him. When he hit a million subscribers, I got a video of me crying in the car with yeah. him. Yeah. And that's that's those are his and achievements. That's real, not isn't it? You're like buzzing you know? for him. So it's yeah, same thing. It's like for me it's and it's and like I said, it's like we all grow together. So yeah. even though like so now if he's gaining followers and subscribers, we're still frequently collaborating when beta mm. squad. So it's like that helps me, that helps everyone else. You know, if he's on a bigger stage, it's like people, a lot of new, a whole new audience will find chunks. Yeah. Now they want to watch his yeah, videos. They'll see me in the videos. They'll yeah. see AJ, they'll see all of us. And we all grow. And that's how it's always been. Like it hasn't changed. How enjoyable were those days? Because now you, we'll get onto your podcast in a bit. You're in, you know, you live in an amazing house with like cameras, lights, studios. How nice were those days when it was raw and you just chucked your SD card in and you were filming like random, like shaving yeah. your head and stuff like how, how like do you look back on them with really fond memories? 100%. I, I always like have, so it usually happens like 
once a month where I just end up binge watching our old videos. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just yeah. like, wow, man. <laughs> I'm like, wow, man. Like the yeah. passion, you can see the passion. Like, yeah. We're just filming videos. It's like, you can see it's getting dark in, in the video. We're there the whole day filming. Mm. And like, I don't, we, like none of us edit our own videos anymore. Yeah. Because you can't, because you, have, you haven't got time, time to edit. Yeah. Um, and there's so much better editors now. Like back in the day, you'd get frowned upon if you had an editor. Like it was- Really? Oh my God, yeah. Really? You couldn't have an editor back in the day. Why was that, just out of interest? Um, I remember it was like, everyone had to edit their own videos. And then I think, I can't remember who it was. It might have been like Callis or something. I can't remember who it was, I might be wrong. Tweeted out saying, I'm looking for an editor. And right. everyone was like, how dare you? Right. Like, what's the, the you in YouTube? Yeah, okay. You know, it's like, yeah. You're, and it's like, it's so weird how the world is different now because yeah. now- Why haven't you got an editor? Yeah, <laughs> everyone's like, got a team of like 10. Yeah. They've got a producer, they've got editors, yeah. they've got like a researcher, they've got like um, um, script, people write their scripts for the yeah. intros, like yeah. it's crazy. Um, but yeah, but now of course, like we have big teams, um, especially on Beta Squad. We all, we all individually have like an editor or two each. Yeah. But back then when I'm watching the videos and I'm watching it, even now when I watch the videos back, I'm like, oh, I like what I did with that edit or- do you? Oh, I cringe at the edit I did, you know, but it's like, it's yeah, cool. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I get to watch it back. But those days were, those days were the best, man. Yeah, I can tell, just the way you're like smiling yeah. at that. Look, it's like really raw and like authentic days, right? I love, I love like rawness. The start of your passion, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Do you know what's really nice about that is you picked up on there is that you were saying you couldn't afford props, you couldn't afford this, but it didn't stop you mm -hmm. achieving or, or following your passion, which I think is really important because the, the, the most common DM that I get all the time is how do I become a presenter? How do I become a presenter? I want to be a presenter. What advice have you got? What advice have you got? And I always say to people like, create something. I, I don't even think I've got a CV now. I have a show reel, which is just five minutes of a little bit of TV, radio, YouTube interviews that I've done. So, you know, mm -hmm. people can see what I'm about if people don't know who I am. And the, the amount of times that people say to me, you know, what, how, how do I get into industry? How do I get, get into industry? And I say, well, just go out and document something, show what you're doing, film mm -hmm. something, edit something together. You don't need to sit down with Pep Guardiola, yeah. interview your mate or go outside a great game and, and vlog and do some interviews. And mm -hmm. people go, well, I don't have a camera. I don't know how to edit. We are so lucky now. You can do everything on your phone. On your phone, yeah. You've got an edit suite and you've got a camera on your yeah, phone. And, yeah, yeah. and uh, it's the biggest advice I have to people is that just film something, show what you can do, follow your passion, mm -hmm. interview someone, sit down like this, sit down, you know, this could be a sofa in our house, sit yeah, down yeah. and talk and, and show it to people or show it to editors or show it to producers because that, that's the best way to go. And it's really great to hear that even at a time when you didn't have the finance you had now, it didn't stop you. You didn't know how to edit, you've just said. You didn't have money for props, but it didn't stop you getting mm -hmm. to where you were, which I think mm -hmm. is really powerful. Yeah, yeah, no, it's true though. Like you said, it's, what you said there is perfect. The whole, I tell people all the time, your phone, yeah, especially nowadays, everyone's got the latest phones or everyone's got such a good phone. Yeah, and there's all these editing softwares on the phone exactly. as well. Yeah, like you don't need to. You can literally just film and then, like, I edit on my phone sometimes when I'm posting like Instagram yeah, reels yeah, or TikToks. Yeah, yeah, it's like everything's there now. It's so easy. That wasn't a, the case back then. Yeah, so true. Um, how, how difficult were those times though? In so you obviously having a lot of fun, but in terms like we had Jack met on here. He said he, he made videos for seven years without making a penny. He then had one video. The Zoella one that banged, and he knew that was a profession. But mm. you know, he's working at an Italian restaurant at the time to fund it. How tough were those times when, as much as you're enjoying it, you're not making the money from it, and you're you're pursuing? It? What was that time frame for you in terms of the growth at the start? Um, well, for the first year, like le legit, didn't make a penny. Full stop. Really. Then for like the next two three years, it was like I wasn't making anywhere enough to like live comfortably. Like yeah. I was making maybe a couple hundred a month, you know? Um, so what didn't really become like, a, like a, I can actually like afford good things where I can yeah. make better videos or, you know, until like four years in, wow. you know, which is not long though. Cause I'm, I'm only like, I'm on my eighth year now. Yeah, wow. So, so how tough was that? Were you doing jobs to fund your YouTube then? And that's the worst part, no. Like I've, really? I've only, ever had one job in my life and I don't even count it as a job. So you never had like a part-time job? You never worked no. as a waiter or like part-time jobs or? No, no I've nothing. only ever had one job and the reason I don't count it as a job is because that job was a steward at the Emirates Stadium. Wow, go on, tell me about that. So I was watching <laughs> games. Go like, on, how, how, did, how did that go? How did you get the gig? And um, so I want to hear more about this. It was just before I started YouTube. So I, was, I just finished college and a friend of mine said, hey, like, Arsenal are looking for stewards, whatever. I said, yeah. of course. Like, <laughs> like, I couldn't afford tickets to go to games. Let me at least be <laughs> yeah, in the stadium. Exactly, yeah. Let me at least be in the stadium. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I applied and there's like so much stages of applications and there's like CRB checks and it's like yeah, six, cool. seven months of processing. But yeah. then I got the job and I was like, like I was over to me and I'm there. I'm watching the games. 
I got to a point where I could like say to my supervisor, oh, I'm just watching the game because I'm analyzing what's happening on the pitch. So yeah. I can know what the fans are responding like to. Shout. You know? Fan behavior. Yeah, yeah. it was working. And now I'm there. But then That's they said, it didn't work as much when we when we scored the winner against Bayern Munich and I'm running up and down. <laughs> so like, what kind of steward I The literally... fans are really chill, but this steward, you gotta have a word yeah, with Yeah, him. literally. I head. went crazy. Um so yeah, I don't really count it as a job because I was like going like going to games. Yeah. And I, I just enjoyed it, even though I was actually was working a lot of the time. I had to, you know, so some, there was a shift where I had to work in the lift, basically, the whole shift. Go on. What does that involve? You just stand in the lift. Wow. Because you've got to be there in the lift in case people are going up and down. How was that in terms of an enjoyment perspective? A bit up and down? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, it's terrible. <laughs> oh, God. That was a good one. I like it. I'm not using it. You uh, can have that one. Um, but yeah, no, so that was my only job. So what's was... happened a minute? How long were you in the lift for? The whole game. You were in the, the lift for the whole game, yeah. just going up and down, and there was one pressing was, the button. And there was one day where I was working in a car park. We beat United. And it was a United game. We beat them 3-0. But, uh, but well, so, the, the, so the lift, the lift involves you just going up? Yeah. Going down, going up, yeah, going down. Yeah, people coming in. Oh my word, for 90 minutes? Yeah. And what did the car parks didn't involve? Uh, the car park's better because car park was pre, because you have to be there three hours before the game. So it's yeah. pre-game, obviously yeah. all the cars coming in, the coaches, yeah. all that stuff. That's quite then cool, we see the coaches. When the stuff. game starts, I get to go to the track. So it's like, I'm next to the pitch. Okay. Because the yeah. car park's not needed anymore. Then yeah. after the game, I'm back in the car park. But the, the good thing about that is like, like go back to my show. I, I was a runner. I did, I was T-boy that led to certain, you, yes. you have to do those graphs to appreciate yeah, the, the days you're stewards. Yeah. That wasn't a graph for me. It was like, I'm working at the Emirates. I was always happy. Like yeah. I was just smiling going to, going to work. Do you know what? I was going to ask you actually, because when I had my season ticket at Tottenham, I remember there were stewards that used to sit from the aisles looking out to the pitch. And there was ones that had to sit looking at the crowd that and never watched the game, that's, that's, which I'd be like, wow, that's got to be so difficult. That's too much FOMO. Yeah. Like you're, you're hearing people go crazy and like, or like, oh, oh, but you don't know what's going I couldn't do that. I have no. to turn around. So you, you were watching the game. That, that's good. Yeah. I was like watching the game as much as I could or yeah. like I'm side on or, but, but then I like, I left a season in because people started to recognize me from YouTube. Oh, from YouTube? Yeah. How was that? A little bit. It was cool at the start. Yeah. Cause you're like, oh my God, people recognize me. But then it became a thing of like, I start getting to like a few thousand subscribers and people recognizing me and it's like, what am I doing here? Like, why yeah. am I working? And people yeah. are kind of like, people are asking you questions like, why are you, why, why are you working when you're, when you're a YouTuber? And yeah, like, got yeah. Yeah, but like, that I don't count as, that's the only job I've ever had in my life. Wow. And apart from that, I just lived off my mum helping me. I was only like 21 anyways. So she, she you had help from family. Yeah, I mean, in, I in terms of home. funding YouTube, if you're not making a profession, yep. you were living at home, didn't have many outgoing. So yeah. you, you, you could... You could do the grind, is what I'm saying. You didn't have to get. Yeah, a job yeah, to... but it was, it was, it was, it was. I could know it was only because like I could live at home. I could have a roof over my head, but I couldn't do anything else. Like I couldn't right. afford much. I, I was couldn't even sometimes like afford a bus ticket to Chunks' house. So I'd wow. walk. It was a thirty minute walk, you know. So I just walk for thirty minutes because yeah. I couldn't get a bus ticket. Wow. I wasn't working, but I was. But I was going to his house and I was filming all day and. Yeah. He was feeding me because I was at his house all day. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very hospitable. Yeah. Isn't it? Oh, amazing, amazing. So amazing. tell us about the Beta Squad came together. Then you and AJ met. So you, AJ, and Chunks knew each other at the start. So AJ was was he doing a lot of filming behind the scenes? Stuff? So AJ, yeah, AJ was behind the scenes. He was a, he, like he loved photography. He studied yeah. media. He wasn't a YouTuber. He initially started off as like kind of like our cameraman. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and then um, he eventually started YouTube as well. So yeah. We then it was me, Chunks, and AJ, and then another friend of mine called Lawai, the one who edited my first ever video. Yeah. Um, he started YouTube as well. Uh, he doesn't do any anymore. He's a DJ now, which right. is, that's his passion. Which yeah. He's doing really good. Class. Um, and then, yeah, then we went to like, an, I actually came across Nico on Omegle. Oh, right. Yeah. Which was like weird because it was like, but it wasn't like a random Omegle day. It was like, it was a YouTube, because on Omegle you can like search keywords. Yeah. Okay. So like yeah, yeah. A, a big YouTuber, I can't remember what it was. A big YouTuber must have tweeted saying, search his keyword and then you might find me. Right. Got you. So obviously Nico and I both, we didn't know each other, we both searched that keyword. Yeah. And I came across Nico, we had a little bit of a chat, didn't know who he was. And then we followed each other on Twitter. And then, then we kind of knew each other from online. And then we yeah. went to, we all went to an event in Birmingham called Insomnia, yeah. which was like a big event, gaming event. And then we met Nico there in person with Kenny because he knew Kenny as well. Right. And then, um, and then yeah, then we just got on really quickly. And then Nico started coming out to London for, just to film with us all the time. So, so you all sort of met separately, really. You yeah. and Chunks met at the early stage, yeah. but you all met. How quickly from you all meeting did you realize that you all wanted to do YouTube or form a group or like, how did the whole well, we, we, Beta Squad yeah. come together? We're all YouTubers, but Beta Squad specifically actually came together kind of because we were like, I want to say we were forced to, but yeah. it wasn't our actual like plan because we were, a group without having a group, you know, it was more like we're collaborating. Yeah, like without an identity. Yeah, but we yeah. didn't have a group, we all had yeah. our own YouTubers. And then um, we wanted to live together. 
Right. But we didn't have money to rent a nice house. So we were, we were managed, like we not managed, but like we had like a um, MCN network or whatever. Yeah. And we, myself and Nico pitched them, or more so Nico initially, pitched them an idea where we have a content house. Great and idea. they obviously helped fund it. Yeah. And obviously it took a while because that wasn't something that was done really in the UK yeah, before. Like the Sidemen have a, had a house, but it wasn't, I don't think, I don't think it was paid for by like a, like a network. Yeah. And um, so it took a while. And then a lot of meetings later, they agreed, but they were like, of course, we're going to get you this house. We'll pay your rent, but you have to form a group channel. Wow. And then we take a percentage of that. Wow, that's clever. So that came from an idea you had to live in a, a better house than you could afford at the time effectively yeah, if someone pays for it, but you have to produce content. So yeah. from that idea, mm. then they said, but you need an identity as a group. Yeah, we needed a group. Wow. And then we needed to upload a certain amount of videos yeah. just so they can like recoup. And yeah. they obviously... We wanted the percentage, of course. Yeah. Um, and then we said, yeah, of course. And then we didn't know it was going to be that kind of house. We had a mansion. Yeah, I know. A swimming pool, like a gym yeah. or a cinema room. So you're just insane. thinking that. At the time, you must be thinking, how have we blagged this <laughs> a little bit? Oh, oh 100%. <laughs> even, even more so me, because I like that's when I got hit with like crazy imposter syndrome. Did you? Go yeah. on, expl explain where that sort of um, came from. It was more like, at that time, I was kind of like, creatively, I was like, shutting down i wasn't making as much videos at the time yeah um a lot of the other boys started like getting into their pump now they're like picking yeah. up a lot and i was yeah. slowing down a bit and um so already i was kind of like okay cool i'm kind of being carried here you really know? yeah and then when we got and obviously i was behind like me and nico especially were behind the idea of the house in the group massively so when it happened and we got the house it's amazing and then very early on i'm in that house and i'm just like I don't deserve to be here. Really? Yeah. That's what you felt like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was just like, I I, can't, I I just kind of felt like I was like stealing a living. I was like, I'm going to get found out here. I'm a bit really? of a fraud, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So then that was bad. Like it was bad for me very early on. So you're in a bit of a bad place mentally then with that, even, even though you're yeah. living it, which is interesting to hear because again, it goes to show in the, the outside world, people see you live in the dream in a mansion, mm -hmm. but you're at the time really struggling to come to terms with that because you feel like, you sh you just said you feel like you shouldn't be there. Which yeah. Really surprised me when yeah, you said yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't help myself though, because like I, um, I had a whiteboard on my wall. So I always like, I always, all my friends know, I, I'm always have whiteboards all everywhere because I like write notes on notes, it and stuff. Yeah. And I had a whiteboard on my wall, and for the first month of me living there, I don't know why I did this. It's so dumb. Like looking back now, but I was a lot younger. Yeah. I had written on my whiteboard, "You don't deserve to be here." Did you? Yeah. And you were writing that every so, day. You don't no, deserve to be here. There. It was written and it stayed there. And every time I woke up, I'd see it. But that's that's a crazy thing that. to see yeah. every time you wake up. That the first thing that you see is a negativity mm. that you've written about yourself. Yeah. So yeah. why did you write that? I don't. I don't know now. Like it was like literally like imposter syndrome. Yeah. I just felt like I was being carried. I just felt like I wasn't pulling my own weight. Yeah. And I, I, like I wasn't uploading videos. Yeah. Like when you're in this, because everyone sees the good stuff. You know. Yeah. Everyone sees, so true. But it's called smashing now, like all yeah. that stuff where you're doing well. And even till now, people are like, you're smashing your it's totally agree. And everything. Yeah. And like sometimes I tweet stuff, dumb stuff and probably get into that later. But yeah, like everyone sees the good stuff and no one actually thinks, everyone's like, you can't, like you can't struggle or why are you yeah. even complaining? But no one sees that it's dra It's so hard creatively because yeah, you have yeah. to actually provide entertainment nonstop all the time. And if you don't, People are like, why are you not? Why you're lazy? You're not yeah. playing a video, or you're like, or of course, you know what I mean. And it's like, if you have a, like a job, like a nine to five job, you can clock out at five p.m. Yeah, go home and then go switch off. Yeah, switch off. Go on a night out. Go for drinks. Chill. Go with the family. Relax. Go wake up the next mm. morning. Go to work. There's no such thing as like clocking out of yeah. work here. There's no such thing. Like I can be it could be three a.m. in the morning, or I could be I could be three a.m. I'm in New York. Yeah, and I'm still writing on my notes like ideas of different yeah. the next video yeah. or I'm looking at that like, always on right it's Im like yeah. it's impossible and there's no summer holidays there's no winter like if if anything summer holidays I should be uploading more because everyone's at home yeah so it's like there is no break there's yeah. zero and it's been like that for eight years straight like, there's yeah. no break there's no stop there's no minute of the day where you're not thinking about work or having yeah. to like deal with something or answer to messages from like work and such and yeah. obviously it's a it's a good problem to have but it's I know exactly what you mean you exactly. know what I mean? Yeah. So if you don't, then if you have a moment where you're just like doubting yourself or you're not uploading or then obviously you're 10 times harder on yourself, I guess, mm. or if the video doesn't perform and all of that stuff. So yeah, I mean, I had that a lot very early on, but um, yeah. 
I'd Mate, it's, it's, time ago. it's amazing hearing that. Were you in a mentally quite quite tough place then at that period? Would you I would say, say so. Yeah. Looking back on it, it's something that you didn't realize at the time, but looking back on it, actually was mm. quite difficult. Yeah, I'd say so for sure. Yeah, for sure. and it's interesting what you say there about people do only just see like, like relating it to you. Uh, there's one thing that you said that I related to massively is when you said people only see the good things. Yeah. The amount of time people say living the dream, living the dream. Like with my situation, I, I, had, I had a real. I've had real issues with my mental health. The year that I got my presenter's contract, which is 10 years after I started Sky, mm -hmm. started as a runner, work experience, not paid, you know, doing overnight cricket logging. The dream was become a presenter, of six, seven, whatever that was, was the same year, that the year that I started presenting at Sky was the same year I got diagnosed as a type 1 diabetic and was really in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And everyone, and I, I kept that really hidden. But everyone on the outside was like, you living the dream, you living the dream. First time I'm interviewing players, it was within that two year period. It was the two years when my mental health was the worst it's ever been. But people mm. don't know what yeah. goes on. And I would never in a million years, and probably wrong of me to think that, but seeing that house, I would have just assumed you were the happiest you've ever been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I can tell without yeah. embellishing it even more or, or getting yeah. you to go down that an area you don't want to go down, you don't have to talk about it. But I can tell just by your face mm. that you look like that was a really tough period for you there. Yeah, especially early on, for sure. For sure, early on it was, it was, it was tough. More because it was like the timing was at the same time, like I said, where I just wasn't, making as much content or didn't mm. feel like I was doing well uh, content wise or creatively wise. And then I felt like I was kind of, you know, wasn't pulling my weight. Yeah. And then being rewarded with such like a, and like a, a house like that kind of feels like an end goal. Like it kind of feels like- Yeah, a, I know what you mean. You've achieved so much. Like people there usually for like at their retirement home or like you've done so much where it's like, if I live, if I'm into the house now, mm. it's like, wow, I can enjoy it. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, where it's like yeah. there, it's kind of like, like now, I kind of feel like I've not, obviously I'm I'm way happy now, but I live in like a two bedroom apartment by myself. Yeah, it, it look it looks like I've gone backwards. <laughs> I went from mansions to like an apartment. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's weird. Like yeah, you meant yeah. to progress to that. So I just felt like the time was was weird. Um, <laughs> but honestly, it was after that. It was still like some of the best experience ever. Yeah, yeah. Because also it was like COVID hit, and obviously COVID yeah. was terrible. But I was fortunate because throughout COVID, I lived yeah. with my friends in a. In a beautiful yeah. place, and you got an outside space like people. Some people didn't a have an outside garden. space. Yeah, we had, we had a big garden. Yeah. We had like, you know, we had like really nice things. We had a gym that like, we could still stay fit. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I was like, it was some of the best um memories of my life. Yeah. Really let's talk about the positive. Then, when did that change? That imposter syndrome. When did that improve? And tell us about some of the the videos you did and some of the the highs that you had in in that house. There's so much like fun memories. Like I. I've got like all the memories stored on my phone. Like I was the one in the house that was like always filming everything. Yeah. So it kind of burns me because when I watch those like videos back, I'm not in them. I'm behind the camera. Oh, right. Yeah. So yeah. I was the one where it's like, like people, they'll run around having like water fights in, <laughs> yeah. in the house. Yeah. You know, those lot are really close. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> nerve, yeah, like nerve fights. And I'm yeah. just like, I'm the one with, I'm getting my camera out. Yeah. You know, I've got videos of like Chuck's breaking a door in the house. Yeah, I've got yeah. video, and like, I'm the one that's filming it. So yeah. there's some incredible memories. Like, uh, but for me, it was um, it was starting SDS actually was what changed everything for me. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause that's when I actually like cr created something by myself, mm. grew it, and then it gave me that belief where it's like, oh my god, I, I'm actually pretty good. Yeah, I've got a lot of questions about SDS actually. I want to get into that yeah, yeah, yeah. in a minute. But before we get, that, I want to just talk about the creative process from from the beta squad because you've all got your individual channels yep. but you've got 8 million subs as a collective mm -hmm. so obviously i mean firstly congrats that is un unbelievable thank you H how does that how does the creative come together because you do i don't want to sound disrespectful to certain content creators mm -hmm. but there's certain I mean, in fact i've done it myself there's certain times when you can literally upload in your bedroom and, and put a video out yes, a lot of the videos that beta squad do look like there is a long process and you can see mm -hmm. with the the cameras that you use the editing that's not an overnight mm. idea to to an upload. You know, there's a real thought process that goes in. So how does a, an idea come to fruition from here's the idea to editing, to storyboarding, to shooting, to upload? Like, How, how does that process sort of work and, and who comes up with ideas and how long does it take, I suppose? It's a lot, it's a lot. I, I think um, one like one of the guys that like manage us, he sent in um, a pie chart the other right. day of like, split of like ideas who made the most ideas oh out of the beta squad and it was so unbalanced it was like 85 percent nico really <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then like <laughs> yeah and then like you can't see the other split. 10 percent aj and then the other like flipping five percent between me chucks and kenny really is, so it's like damn i gotta step up <laughs> um but it was uh yeah it, it, it's, it's it's crazy because of course there's like now we have a system where yeah we all 
have video ideas and we'll direct our own videos. Like yesterday, we filmed the video of Beta Squad. Tomorrow we're filming, Friday we're filming. That's why I said today's the only day I'm free. Yeah, mate, thank this you. This week is Beta Squad. <laughs> but yesterday was my day where right. it's- um, What do you mean by your day? Sorry, that's your idea. So, so it was my idea, it was my video, my idea. Right, so right. I'm like, I was head, I was leading it. I was directing the video. And that's an idea you have, from, but not for your channel, for, for Beta Squad. Channel. Yeah, so yeah. what happens is we have to all pitch in ideas and then we have already in our schedule in our calendar, the next six months of shooting do all you? in my calendar because it's the only way we can do it because we're all so busy. So what wow. we have is usually it's like the first week of every month. Yeah. It's beta week. It's like international break for England. Okay, I yeah, go yeah. away. I don't see my family. I don't, it's, it's intense beta squad filming week. And in terms of pre that, that'll be like Monday, Sharky's day, Tuesday, Chunks' day. Or yeah, kind of. It'll be like, we have to put in ideas and stuff. And then if everyone wants to do it, it's like, cool, Sharky, you're, we're doing your idea on the yeah. 5th of December. Now uh, we have for the month prior, I'm in calls like video calls with the producer, planning every, wow. everything. What we how's, how we storyboarding the video? Yeah, the rest of the boys aren't involved in this. So, so to your idea, just to just yeah. to confirm, fifth of December, whatever day is, is Sharky's idea. You've got an idea. You'll then not the rest of the beta squad. You'll then speak to directors, camera ops, yeah. editors. Yeah. How we storyboarding it? How we shooting yeah. it? How we editing it? And then you just come together and sort of brief. Your yeah. mates, the other base yeah, yeah. members, about yeah. what they're doing. Exactly. So they come wow. on the top line and everything of like what the, the idea kind of generally is. Yeah. And then yeah, and then on the day of the shoot, they we all turn up. Of course, then I'm the one who I've I've got like more of the work to do that day because I, yeah. I know everything that's happening. And then obviously the boy, we tell, I told the boys this was happening, this was happening. Like the video I did yesterday was I got them both to open up a different restaurant each. One cool. had like a really nice, like beautiful restaurant. One had like a small cafe. Yeah. And they both had to run a restaurant. Who can run a more success, uh, successful restaurant? We had a food critic come in, but wow. they didn't know who the food critic was. It was a mystery yeah. diner. We had like so much members of the public dine into the restaurant. Wow. So I was like involved in like the whole planning of that. Wow. And then, yeah, then when the video has been edited, obviously goes away and it's like, that's a big edit. Like, some videos yeah. are a bit easier. That was yeah. a big edit. So that's not going to come out till like late next month. So you're involved in all that, even like the, like licenses and stuff like that and getting it and that your director's involved in getting the food critics in and no, so that, so that, that That's more like the producer. So for me, it's more like, I'm like, this is the video idea I want to do. Then we'll have a call and it's like structure it. We're right. going to do this, we're going to do that. Two teams. They're in this team, they're in that team. This is how it's going to go. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Dinosaur will come in, everything, blah, blah, blah. And then the producer will go off. He's got all the notes. They're going to do the casting. Yeah. They'll do it. The, and then obviously they'll it'll run me through. They'll be like, okay, this is the casting we got. Do you like yeah. this? I'm like, nah, maybe change that, change that. But they do all the casting. They book the restaurants. They book the locations. Yeah. But I have approval. I have final approval. Yeah, you're like the exec producer. Yeah, so I'll be producer. like, yeah, so yeah, I'll be yeah. like, Actually, no, I don't like that restaurant. Change to this one. But like they go the whole and, thing is your brainchild that for that idea. That That's for that brain. video, yeah. Wow. But then, but then that works more now because before it wasn't like that. Yeah. Before it was mostly Nico just. Yeah, go on. Go back to the pie chart then. So is is Nico yeah. the genius of the beta squad? YouTube is his thing. Yeah, like he's got. Yeah. By like him on his own, he's got seven million subscribers yeah. on his own channel. Like yeah. he's obviously like very YouTube driven and like that's his thing. You know, whereas like for me, it might be more football or yeah. like podcasts or other things. And Chunks is just a big entertainer or yeah. Kenny was doing boxing or, but yeah. Nico and AJ was like, they're just YouTube yeah. heavy. So creatively, they're gonna be a bit more. Yeah, talk to me about how creative and sort of, I suppose, a, a, I've heard him described as a YouTube genius on this podcast actually. So, yeah. so give us an insight into how mm. talented Nico is and how his brain works. It's so hard to know how his brain works. Like it's like, the guy ran for mayor yeah. and came fifth out of 20 <laughs> candidates. Yeah. Some of them like actual parties, like they were like actual <laughs> yeah. political parties and he beat, he came up like ahead yeah. of them. Like this, like, it's insane <laughs> the, 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 the things he does, you know, but it's, everything's like so well made. You mm. know, everything's so like, he doesn't, now he's got another channel where he uploads weekly on, which is so good. Cause now I'm like, now you feel like a YouTuber to me, but before mm. it was like, and on his main channel, he doesn't upload he plays maybe five videos a year yeah. on his main channel. But is that because but I've seen some of his videos? Yeah, because there's a lot of, going back to my point, time. And I imagine there's some that take months yeah, oh, of execution. Months. Block, they're blockbusters. He did a series recently where he traveled around the world. It was like the biggest menace series where mm. him and his mate from America, another YouTuber called Gideon, were like just challenging each other to do yeah. big stunts. That video was filmed, didn't come out till like a year later. Yeah. Those video, I mean, those videos didn't come out till like a year later. Well, why is that? Is that because he, he has such creative control? He's, he's got such a... Um, attention to detail and everything. Yes, that mixed of like a lot of other things, maybe things went wrong, they had right. to refilm a lot of things, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. But in general, like it might take him a two, three, four months for videos to come out. Wow. Because like, even like the one he, the one he did recently was, 
Liberland, which is like a, a a country between a small island between Croatia, yeah. Serbia, and like he yeah he 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 gave himself a task to try and like stick a flag on there and everything, yeah. and he did it, and it took him so long to make that video. Yeah. Um. But yeah, now he's like, his brain just comes up with like crazy concepts, and he. But the thing is, what impresses me more is he makes them happen. Yeah. Like anyone can think of big ideas. Like he yeah. makes them happen. Like is he, that his part of his genius? Do you think that he yeah. actually can follow through on on? It doesn't matter how big the idea is, he can get it done. It's in, it's insane what he does. Like, there's nothing that's impossible. Like, he snuck into the ring for a KSI fight in a prime bottle. Yeah. And when he told me he was going to do that, I said, there's no chance it's going to work. Yeah, did you? How did yeah. that conversation go? Literally like he that. Does, <laughs> he does, yeah, like that. Like, he doesn't, like, okay, <laughs> yeah. watch me. Like, do you I, think that spurs him on more, though, when you say there's no way you can do that? He's like, oh, I'm going to prove you. Maybe, but it wasn't like, <laughs> I didn't believe he couldn't do it. I was more, like, concerned. I was like, like, I was more like, how's KSI going to take that? Because... You know when someone's like training for a fight yeah. and they're in the ring for like yeah. they're about to go to yeah. war yeah. Yeah. and then someone's in the ring with you in a front <laughs> bottle. I'm like, I don't know how he's going to take that. But with Nico, it's like he does everything so well that you can't be mad at him. Yeah. Like, even in case I only found out it was Nico, I was laughing at yeah, him Yeah, I remember, yeah. But I, I'm Massive kind of like time, a, that story, wasn't it? Massive. Huge. Viral moment. Yeah, he was in the prime bottle. Yeah. But if you watch the build up to that, the way he did it was genius where... Mm. Case I thought it was someone else. Yeah. It was like a, it was insane. But yeah, like Nico is probably the best YouTuber. He is the best YouTuber. In the I was going to ask you that. Do you th he's sorry. So he's the best YouTuber in the UK. You think? For sure, and one of the best in the world. And do you think he's the most talented person in YouTube in terms of like creativity? Hundred percent. Really. Hundred percent. Because I think like he, his videos aren't like. But the thing is, his videos aren't. You, he loves YouTube so much, but I'm just like, you can have a series on Netflix or Amazon. Like the way your videos are that good. Mm. You know, that, that, for me, it doesn't even like fit on YouTube anymore. It's like Sasha Baron Cohen. It's like all these kind of that's his that's his idol. Who's his idol? Sasha Baron Cohen. Is one of his, one really? of his idols. Yeah, it's like these kind of like, he can have a TV show, Nico. Like he can mm. go on. What do you think is next for him then? When you said that, you, you, so you think he's almost? Were you about to say there he's like too creative for YouTube? Is that what you were getting at? It's a little bit because I feel like his his content now, like I feel like now he's got the NDR channel. The videos he's making there, yeah, they're perfect for YouTube. He's making weekly videos on there, which are like game shows which are yeah. like similar to beta school type videos they yeah. work for youtube his main channel videos yes they still they go crazy numbers like who am i to say don't do it when he's getting yeah. tens of millions of views yeah. of course but a bit of me thinks i can see that on massive streaming services like a netflix because those that's where he'll receive people like audience from around the world like mm -hmm. youtube is still of course it's around the world and yeah youtube's the biggest online platform to upload videos but when you put it on streaming platforms, then there's people who have never heard of you. Yeah. In random corners of the world. Takes it to a different level, doesn't it? That are gonna just yeah. be like, oh, what's this? Let me have a look at this. And mm. now it's like it's a different level. Do you think but he's got plans that, to do that? I don't know. The general nowadays, because we don't live together anymore, I don't yeah. know the intricate planning of, of what everyone has in mind. Yeah. But he's such a he's he's been on YouTube since he was like 13. Yeah. So he just loves YouTube, so I don't always. I don't think yeah. he's gonna leave anytime soon. Wow, Mate, I don't want him to leave, but yeah. it's fascinating hearing that that insight and how you work. So, in terms of like the ideas, then and the piece, of the, going back to the pie, the the, the pie diagram, when it's your idea, like be honest there. Obviously, you're in a group, so it's you want, want all the ideas to bang. But do you want? Oh, 100%. Sharky wants Sharky's idea to bang more than Chunks' idea because it's your idea, right? Hundred percent. Like bragging rights. It's yeah, like, I bet, yeah. It's like, so does that yes. get quite competitive then? That uh, no, because. Usually it was always Nico making videos, uh, video ideas, but now, because we're all doing videos, I'm looking at mine a bit more. There's a rivalry, right? I'm like, <laughs> hey boys, my video's one of 10, or like, hey boys, my video's like, it's, it's getting up there. Um, but it's always nice because then it's kind of like a, it's confidence booster, you Validation, know? yeah. It's validation, that's yeah, what it is. Yeah. It's like, oh my God, like this video that I worked on, that I led, has X amount of views and it's doing really well and yeah. the audience are loving it. It's not always about the views, sometimes it's about the reception it gets as well. Yeah. Because sometimes a video might not get as many views, but the reception is I so totally good. totally agree with that. Then, then and maybe the that, quality maybe, of the yeah. comments and the engagement. That's what I'm yeah. saying, but maybe that's because we packaged it wrong. Maybe the title and thumbnail yeah. was wrong, so not many people got to see it. Yeah. But the people that did watch it loved it. So maybe it's a case of changing the thumbnail, changing the title. Yeah. Maybe. That's really interesting you said that, because certainly when I do interviews with Sky, there's the, the bigger the person that you interview tends to be, it's not, it's not a generalization, but mm. if you're interviewing a Jurgen Klopp, it's more likely that that will get more views than interview, interviewing a, a manager in the lower leagues, just because people, more people know who he is. But it doesn't mean, it's a bad example, because I think my favorite ever interview I've ever done was, was with Jurgen Klopp, but it doesn't yeah. mean that the content from the manager you've done lower league is worse than that, but no. it's just might be a harder sell. Yeah. And you, it's interesting that you have, 
the similar things with yeah. titles, thumbnails. There's so many aspects to making so, a video bang, right? So, so many aspects. Like people think it's easy. People think it's just like upload a video and it goes out and yeah. And we upload every Saturday. Well, we try to, that's our aim every Saturday for Beta Squad. Sometimes we upload on a Sunday because mm. the video took a bit longer to edit and people yeah. kill us, man. Did they? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, but where's the, the video? video? <laughs> what, like you had one job and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, guys, if you know how much effort goes into it, it's like sometimes we're making videos where it's like 12 camera angles, yeah, seven different mic pack, audio packs. yeah, And then on top of that, so much graphics on it. Like it's crazy, but yeah. there's so much elements to obviously make a video perform the best, which is, like I said, the thumbnail and titles, et cetera, is, is, is huge. Massive. Because no matter how good yeah, totally the video agree. is, no one will ever know until they click on it. They have yeah. to click on the video first. Yeah. And what are they clicking on? The thumbnail and the title. Yeah. So... It's like, no one knows, what's, it's like, it's like, I don't know, maybe going to a kid, like a two-year-old kid and giving them like two presents on Christmas or whatever. And the one is like, not gift wrapped brown yeah. box. And the other one's like a beautifully gift wrapped box. No matter what, the kid doesn't know what's inside either of them, mm. but he's gonna go to the one that has like a ribbon and yeah. everything. So he's packaged really well. Yeah. But the one, the other one might have the better contents inside yeah, it. Yeah, so true. You know, so it's like, it's got to go together. You have to yeah. have, the package has got to be beautiful. So yeah. people are attracted to it. And then when they do open it, when they click the video, the contents have to be engaging yeah. where they want to now keep coming back. And for the watch time, people to keep to And keep then, then there's, yeah, so then there's the whole, how the video is made, edited, because now it's all short form content. So mm. if you're trying to get them to watch a 15 minute video, yeah, which is what right. YouTube is, it's, there's so much different things you have to do. Maybe you have to think about editing techniques where the video's got a, can't stay in one frame for too long, otherwise yeah. people are gonna stop watching. You yeah. gotta like change angles a lot or keep the high intensity or maybe keep 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 them engaged where you keep letting them know there's something big coming at the end. Yeah. Or, so there's so much techniques to, now you've got them in the video, you've done well with the packaging of the video, now it's how can I keep them for as long as possible? Yeah. And there's like, that comes into editing, that comes to the concept, that comes to the... Yeah, it's fascinating, that, that insight, and I agree with everything you said. It's mad you said even two-year-olds there, because my, my, my boy is two, mm, my amazing. son, and he now, he'll watch YouTube, and he loves like um, diggers and any programs with diggers and cars and stuff, mm. and he will now look at a thumbnail on YouTube and go, Daddy, that one? Yeah, see? And I'll have to go to the TV and go, this one? He goes, no, the, the one with the... Ro he said, rolled roll, he loved rolled rollers and diggers. He goes, the one with the rolled roll? I'll go, this one? He went, yeah. See? And I'll click on it, I was like, how mad is that? That's insane. That's mad, isn't it? That is insane. That's like any age, like yeah. what your eyes are, what you want to see. Draws you in. Already yeah. draws you in from the thumbnail. Obviously yeah. kids might not really title, so the thumbnail is even more important. Like it's like, yeah. why do I, uh, there's so much videos on my screen right now. It's like information overload. Yeah. On my homepage, I see 50 videos. I on so see, many different platforms see a, as well, a video right? from Sky Sports, I might see a baseball video, I might see whatever. And it's like- Click on the Sky Sports one, right? <laughs> yeah, always. <laughs> yeah. And then second, it's like my eyes are drawn to that one. Yeah. You know, and I want to click on that one. Yeah. And that tells a story. Yeah. And then obviously when I watch it, it's like, hopefully the video's good enough for me to stay around. If Mate, not, speaking then. of numbers on YouTube, you need to get into nursery rhymes. Some, some of the stuff that he watches, <laughs> Wheels on the Bus, 68 million views it's or something, crazy, 100 right? million views on Peppa Pig. <laughs> Honestly, Mad. the numbers on Peppa Pig are insane. Um, anyway, I think that, that nicely brings us uh, to, to, towards the end of the, U, the YouTube section. STS Podcast, I've got to ask yeah. you about that because you said just now that was one of the most proud moments for you. So, so bearing in mind, you've got 8 million subs with... Mm -hmm. But it's got a million subs on your own channel. Yeah, just quickly, subs. what do you think is the secret behind that growth? By the way, like getting to eight million, because that that is it's insane as well. Because mad mo most of that was in the last year and a half. Is it a number you thought you'd ever get to? Like, be be honest, if you, if it was, no, 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 wasn't. no, for sure not. So what we, did we put started? That down to? We started last year, so it's twenty twenty three now. We opened twenty twenty two with one million. You opened twenty twenty two, like just over a million, yeah, like a million and a half. Wow, yeah. So all so most of our grown... growth was most of our growth was in 2022 and 2023. So what is that? What do you put that down to? We just upload weekly. We never upload the regular uploads. Before. Regular yeah. uploads and obviously big videos. Yeah. Um, we've had big names about like KSI, Trent, yeah, Burner Boy, Dave, Storm. Trent is brilliant. Yeah. So we had big brilliant. names and then we've had like big concepts. When you nailed the crossbar the first time within and that's the that's all that real. genuine. All the... Genuine hand on brilliant. heart. There was he just got up and hit the crossbar. And the celeb was like so cool. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah, yeah. It was <laughs> insane. Um. Yeah, and then so it just comes down to like uploading regularly. Like in 2021, 2021 or 2020, 20, I think 2021. Yeah, we didn't upload a single video that whole calendar year, not one. Why is that? That is uh, that was because of legal stuff. So we when I right. talked about the management or that that owned uh, part of the base squad, we then had disagreements with them and right, we wanted okay. to get out of it. Yeah. So we're kind of like we're not uploading a video until we 
settle this. Yeah. So then at the end, eventually we like got out of it completely. And then now it's like, cool, let's get back on it. And then yeah. we uploaded every single week. We haven't missed a week since. And then now- and that's a huge reason behind it. Yeah. yeah. And now we're like, of course, we're like about to eight minutes subs. And hopefully- oh, How far do you think Beta Squad can go? What's, what's the goal? Did you have like a target for next year or anything? No, but now it's like we're eyeing the 10 million because you get a diamond plaque, yeah. which is like, I never in my wildest dreams thought I'd see one, like a diamond plaque. Yeah. I see like the big YouTubers have it. It's like okay, so people like that. Yeah, I see yeah. it and it's like crazy. Cause like now it's like, I've got the silver one, the 100K one. I've got the gold ones. Now I want to see the diamond. Yeah, it looks good that one, doesn't it? Yeah, I've cause you can't it. put it on your wall. It's like, yeah. But the other ones I have on my wall, but this one I can't yeah. put on my wall, so I might get like a, like a whole case for it. <laughs> Thinking about it already. Yeah. Surely that's achievable though. I mean, it is. I mean, Because they say that the hardest growth is the first bit, right? Once yeah. you, yeah. I mean, if you're eight, you'd think you'd get to 10. Hopefully that's the aim yeah. to get there at some point next year. And it's mad that I've seen like on, I see, I see Chunks go to Australia recently, mm -hmm. getting mobbed in Australia. Well, yeah, I, we I, I know well. from being with Chunks and being in, in situations, I, I know how big he is over here because I've been in social situations with him a lot, but... It did blow my mind, if I'm being honest, when I saw it in Australia, there is roadblocks for people like him. I mean, again, it, incredible seeing the growth that he's had, but it, it's everywhere he goes, isn't it? Yeah, it's crazy. It's like the same with us. We went to, because he went to Australia three times this year. I don't know why he, he went so many times. But we went as well a month after him as Bait Squad, because we made yeah. videos up out there. We made like five videos out there. And um, we announced that we we're going to be at a certain park and we got there and it was like police horses were on the news. Incredible. Like three over three thousand kids were there chasing us. Yeah. It was insane. It was insane. That was the other side of the world. Like yeah. Said, How does that so. make you feel? I mean you must be very proud of that. Yeah, that yeah, hundred percent. Like I Like I, where where you've been what do you think back to you being in Chunks' bedroom with a hundred uh, subscribers yeah, think, when you I, have I, that? I think I do that a bit too much. Cause now I live <laughs> alone, so it's like it's like it's like because before it was when you're when we were coming up or whatever, um, we're all together. So it's like we're just making videos. We live together. We're doing this. What we're doing that, and then like we're just kind of like in our own bubble because yeah. we don't really have time to look outside that and think. Look what we've achieved. Mm. Now I live alone. I get that a lot more. I'm just at home and I'm seeing something or whatever, yeah. and I'll just be like watching like a video on my phone. And I'm like that's insane. Like yeah. So yeah. So I I, I do it a bit too much now when I'm like thinking about where we were and then how, how you get emotional that. when you think of it like that. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, fair. Yeah. Mate, credit to you though. You, 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 you all deserve it. It's, it's amazing seeing that growth. Let's talk about the pod then. Yes. What was the inspiration behind it? Um, It was around that time where I was kind of like down in the dumps. And, um, but one thing is like, I always loved football. Everyone knew I always loved football. Yeah. But I wasn't making much content about football anymore. I was making like challenges, pranks, like you just said, vlogs. And, um, so yeah, I just wanted to make another channel and I didn't care about the numbers or nothing. I didn't mm. care anything about it because I was like, I'm already down and out anyways. Let me just make another channel. So I wanted to make a sports channel first of all, like not just football, just sports in general. Yeah. So it was called Sharky Does Sports. Yeah. That's what SS stands yeah. for. And I made a video about basketball. I made a UFC. My first ever upload, I think, was a UFC video. Yeah, because you're into quite a few sports. I've seen it at tennis, tennis, basketball, yeah, football. Yeah, yeah, MMA. So yeah, yeah. Um, so that's why I knew that. So I wanted to really make a channel for that. Yeah, yeah. So I made like an MMA, like a UFC video, and then I made um, an NBA video. Then I was like a football reaction or something, and then obviously it was fine. I was like, uploading so regularly, and then I did another video with my with my friend Starplay, who's still part of the podcast now, and it was like, it was like we ranking. Um, and I was like, yeah, it was like grading all 20 teams, or every club's best player, that's what it was. Yeah, every yeah, club's yeah, best player. Yeah. So one of them's like ideas that we always see on YouTube. So every club's best player. And had like 200,000 views. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, this is sick on a new channel. Yeah. And then we did every club's worst view, worst player. <laughs> and then that did really well as yeah, well. Yeah. So now I just kept sticking to football because then I, then I did another MMA video and it just didn't do well. Right, and I was okay. Like, I was like, actually- So you not... knew that football was your audience. Because I was like, really, end of the day, that. it's like, I'm killing the channel if I'm doing football videos, getting subscribers from now, I'm getting yeah. from football fans who've seen the Every Club's Best Player, Every Club's yeah. Worst Player. They've now pressed subscribe because yeah, they've enjoyed mean. it. And I just drop a UFC video. And then it- I'm like, I'm not clicking on that. Yeah. Like, we're talking about the whole packaging and then I can see yeah. that thumbnail. Then I click on it, even though I love it. And a third video can dilute the importance of a fourth video. Exactly, because now I go back to the football video, yeah. YouTube is an algorithm. You know, it's not human. So YouTube mm. are like, these people have stopped watching yeah. Sharky. So, so we're not going to push it as much. Yeah. Even though it's a football video, which they yeah. like. So I was like, okay, cool. Let me just stick to football. Um, then it became that, and then just like football videos like that, easy tier lists and whatever. And then 
I started a podcast. We went to a studio um, nearby. Mm. It was like I had to keep renting studio time and everything. Yeah. So I wasn't doing it much. I was doing it like once a month, like a big monthly roundup. And then um, then I just say, you know what? I got, I ordered like a round table on Amazon, like a foldable round yeah, table. Yeah. And um, I ordered a whole like four mics, uh, like four road mics and a road procaster thing. Yeah. Cost me like a grand and a half. And I was like, I don't know. Like I, it, was, it was expensive for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I was like, you know what? Because I have it now. I don't need to go to rent studio time. So I was like, if I keep doing it, yeah, I'll yeah. make up the money I would have spent in the studio time anyway. Yeah. And then I just was filming them in my bedroom. Yeah. So I'd have to unfold the table every time I stopped filming. Wow. So like, fold the table, unfold it, put the mics up, borrow. So I had one camera and I'd borrow AJ's camera, Nick's camera, because yeah, we lived yeah. together. So then we had two camera angles. And then we just started doing the podcast. And then... For me, it was, I made sure I grew the podcast off my friends who weren't already big names. Wow. So I didn't get chunks in. As, yeah, why I didn't, get, I was going to ask you that. Why didn't you do that? I don't know. One is I didn't want to feel like I was bothering them. Yeah. And two, it was like, I wanted to do something on my own. I wanted wow. to prove to myself I can grow something yeah. without the support of yeah. like bigger content creators. I you said to that see. a few times now, just, mm. just to pick you up on that. Sorry, that you felt like you weren't worthy in, in, in mm. the, the base squad house. There were, there were people that were doing more. You said now that you wanted to grow it without the helps of mm. your, your friends who have more subs. So, mm. so, so is that been quite important to you in your YouTube journey that you don't want to be seen to be yeah. reliant on other people that you can do it yourself? Cause you've mentioned that a few times. Yeah, of course, because even like, I don't know, I just didn't, even like the comments and all that stuff where people were just like, um, cause obviously then it became a thing of, I just wasn't doing much in the videos. I was, I was a lot in the background in the videos. Mm. So I'd get a lot of like comments. of was like, this guy's boring and all that right. stuff. Like I still get some now, but no one near. So I was like, I just want to do something by myself and I don't care about how I was going to do. I don't care about the views, Yeah. whatever. And it was like, I had my friends, Faisal, yeah, yeah. Who, who was an estate agent. And I got this guy who was working in a, in a, in a school and like, like just my normal yeah, friends. Yeah, so people that weren't in YouTube Yeah, really. but I knew they were passionate about football. Yeah. And we just, I just grew up off them. I just grew up with them. And yeah. then it just kept growing and growing and growing. And I'm like, then obviously my confidence was like skyrocketing. Cause I'm like, I'm growing this. Yeah. And it's purely off my name and- People are subbing for you. Exactly, for yeah. me and my friends. And my friends who were normal people yeah. with normal jobs, et cetera, like didn't weren't in the content space. They, they're gaining an audience themselves But they're now, now. content creators now themselves. They're, a lot of them now, yeah. they're, and they're gaining an audience themselves and they're yeah. gaining all of that stuff. And I'm like, wow, okay, this is sick. And then I, that's when I really got more com belief in myself if I can do something, I could Did do you? this. Yeah, and then, then it's just got to the point where it's probably- it's one of the biggest in this space, yeah. in that football content space. Yeah. And um, and yeah, I mean, we've had, we went to the World Cup. We've done our we've done a live show, and there's still so much I want to do. Well, we booked Fuad like, on Saturday Social recently. Yeah. You and it because obviously Fuad is known from SGS. There's people like that that have that have, yeah. that have become content creators. Yeah, yeah. So you, that, you must be very proud of that part of it as well that you're course. giving other people a platform. Of course, and people like Fuad and there's like Lias and they already like they they had they'll. Well, on other platforms, like Fuad's got his own podcast, his own but show. But they're very much known. Like, but yeah, a, a lot of people know them from SDS. SDS. Some people know them from their own yeah. things. But there's some people who genuinely, like, they had, they weren't even online. Yeah. Like Faisal, for example. Yeah. Faisal didn't even have, I always make a joke, he didn't even have a WhatsApp picture. Like, really? He didn't even have Twitter, <laughs> didn't have nothing. Oh, it's the even more extreme. So I it's even more mean. extreme, yeah, you know? Yeah, I see what you mean, yeah. I, like, so it's like, there's some people, so, so that's what I always feel super proud about. And, um, and yeah, I mean, hopefully more, but there's, uh, then I just, then it comes to a point where I just like, still, I'm just, I just can't stop thinking about there's so much stuff I want to do. And I'm just like, yeah, it's going well, but I'm just not, I'm just delusionally like, I just, I don't know. I just have like crazy high targets. Sometimes. Do you? Yeah. And it's interesting. I saw on social media recently, you put that you weren't happy with where the pod is at right now. And you, you actually apologized for that to the audience. Which I, I was really surprised about because it is doing very well. And you've said that yourself, it's, the thing that you're the most proud of. Yeah. So what did you mean by that post? Uh, that was probably like 2 a.m. when I tweeted that. So that's probably was why. It? <laughs> like, I don't know. At night time, I just, I sometimes just save stuff. I don't know. But I just, yeah, for me, it was, I don't know. I just have like crazy high, high targets sometimes. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, I just want to, I just want to achieve the biggest or the, the biggest of whatever I'm doing or I want to, fully maximize everything to the highest level. Mm. So now maybe I was just like at home thinking, like, cause the thing is, I always say, um, 
in my head, I'm like two months ahead of the audience because I'm making the content. Right, okay. So if I, if I feel something now, if I feel yeah. content is starting to get draining or like is drawing out now or getting boring, yeah. In two months, if I don't do anything about it, because I have a two month buffer period, if I don't do anything about it now, yeah. in two months, the audience will realize that. That's okay, what I always think. I might be completely wrong, but that's how I always yeah, think. Yeah. That's why I always change concept of SES a lot. That's why SES has always felt fresh. Yeah, yeah. Because there's times I'm like, okay, this is getting boring now. I'm going to change it. Right, and then yeah. the audience, while they're yeah. still enjoying it, I've changed it. And they're like, Freshen oh my God. Up. So I was probably at that point where I was just like, okay, now I haven't, there's stuff I haven't done. There's so much stuff I want to do. And in my head, even though all the replies to that tweet was, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, this is well, incredible. I mean. yeah. But in my head, it's like, that's good. I'm glad you find it incredible. That's good. Yeah. But if you knew where I wanted to be right now, mm. it'll be 10 times better. It's good to have those drives though, isn't it? Those, yeah. those beliefs that to, to, I suppose to, like you set a high bench for yourself, which mm. is probably why you're at where you're at, I imagine. Where, where do you want to take it then? You said you've got so much more to achieve. Um, what, what, what is next for, for Sharky, for Beta Squad, for SGS in the new year? Where would you like to see yourself sort of end the next year with all of those? Uh, I, with, I mean, with Beta Squad, I w I'd love to maybe, for us to now start venturing out more on the business side of things. Yeah. So like the YouTube is great. It's, it's got to keep growing. We've kind of like, we've got a routine now where yeah. we're uploading every week. But now it's more, I want to figure out ways we can start releasing more merch or yeah. doing events. Okay. You know, yeah, where yeah. people can come to come and see us and meet yeah. us at events yeah. or, or, you know, like make a cool product we can sell. Yeah. You know, like we've grown a big name now. Yeah. Let's, let's take advantage of branch it. And out. Branch out. And yeah. You know, so something like that with Beta Squad, that would be amazing. Um, with SDS, maybe like a mini live tour. We did our first live Wicked. show in, in, yeah, in was summer. That? that was amazing. Like, did you get a good buzz from that? It was, yeah, it was, yeah, in, yeah. It was incredible. So maybe do like a live tour. Um, the Euros is coming up in the summer. Yeah. Try and get try and get out there. Um, and just figure out ways where now we can do different shows where it's not... I never wanted it to be just a podcast. Like, yeah. For me, it's the podcast space is amazing. There's so many podcasts now, which is, which is great. But also, it's also... Um, also becoming a little bit diluted, which both ways is good. And it's good regardless because I have mm. a podcast myself. Yeah, but um, I never want to be just a podcast. Yeah, I know what you mean. I want the podcast to be kind of like the main feature yeah. of SDS, but I want to have different shows. Like, yeah, build minutes. an audience from it, but allow that to other things. Exactly. Yeah. Where it's like these two, people, like Faisal and Leas, have their own show. Yeah, like their own like yeah. weekly show. Like, and I want SDS to be like a network. Yeah. of different shows. Football shows, yeah. So I want to start building that. Maybe start building the the the, the foundations for that. And then I'd love to get like player access because I I can mm. get. I have like a lot of friends that are footballers, mm. but I haven't really used it yet yeah. for like content. So I want to start getting player access, making videos of players, etc., and figure out ways where I can keep it fresh but keep it like wait. You know, there's you know like a brand channel, like a pro direct. Yeah, yeah. I want to be able to compete with them. Yeah, but nice. I'm not a branch on that. I'm like an individual that yeah. created that. So there's so much ideas I have. I Mate, I think you're in a, an amazing place in your career where you probably can achieve a lot of that. Um, I just got a few quick fire questions yeah, to end it. it. Just about your career. Best vid you've ever made. What are you saying? If you had to pick one. Um, vlog at the World Cup final. Yeah. Oh, what a final as well. Insane. What a final. Insane. It was a simple video. It was the vlog, but for me, that's my favorite video ever. Yes. Yeah. I watch it back and I could just see I was at the World Cup final and the game was insane and I'm there with my friends. And insane game. Um, most talented YouTuber you've worked, I think you've answered that, Nico. You say the most talented YouTuber? Yeah, Nico. Okay, sure. very quick answer. Most underrated YouTuber? So maybe someone that hasn't got the subs that you feel they should have, but is a really talented person in the space. I'm going to go keep going. Beta's got bias because I can't. AJ Shabil. Yeah? Yeah. You feel he should have more? For sure. I mean, he's doing well. He's got like... Almost probably two million subscribers, yeah. but I think you should have five million minimum. Okay, I like that. Uh, best moment, so you've done best vid, but best moment of your career or something you're most proud of? Um, seeing my face on the Emirates Stadium banner. Yeah, yeah. just because the time Arsenal I, love. I'm, like, I'm my, my face on the stadium. Yeah. So every time I go there, I just... Fair play. And then one goal for the future. So Sharky, it could be Sharky, it could be Beta Squad. Could be SDS, one thing you'd love to achieve, almost like a bucket list moment you'd love to tick off. Um, I would say... Hosting an award at the Ballon d'Or. 
Oh, I like that. That just came to my head. Good, now. yeah. How just cool would that be? That would be class, wouldn't it? You know? Just seeing the room, seeing everyone in there. That would be crazy. Just seeing them all, yeah. That'd I like that's a great answer, mate. Um, and Arsenal, go on, go ask it. Obviously, you're Arsenal Lums Spurs. Yeah. So finally, where will Arsenal finish this season? In the league? In the league. First. You think you're going to win it? I think I'm going to win it. Okay. I think, we ha I think we're going to win it this year. Do you? Yeah, yeah. I don't think wow, so, yeah. mate, I'll be turning my phone off if that happens. That'll <laughs> <laughs> be hard for you. Uh, mate, brilliant. I, 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 Starky, I've got to say, absolutely brilliant to have you on. Obviously, we know each other very well and um, you, you've popped in today. and been, I've been really honest, actually, as well. It's interesting hearing you talking about the highs and the lows in, in, in terms of where your mindset is. Just, just final question, really. We ask this to all our guests. Just advice that you'd have for people. It, it doesn't necessarily mean, needs to be on camera, but off camera, obviously, mm. you self-taught with the editing. You've been very open and honest about the highs and the lows. Just advice that you'd have for people that are listening to this. Um, well, if you're listening to this, doesn't you might not want to become a YouTuber or anything. So it's not specific to YouTube. Yeah, it could be anything you want to do. It could be any career you want to go down. But I'd say don't be afraid to fail because you're, you know, like it's... Well, you should be like, be happy to welcome failure because everyone that succeeded has failed many times. So people are scared of failure and that's what's going to block them from doing anything. I like, that's say. a really good answer. I actually love failing. Do you? I, I love it. Because you gain a lot from I'm it. I'm obsessed with it, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so don't be afraid to fail. Don't, don't be, you don't have to be obsessed with it, but don't be afraid of it. I like so. it. I mean, that's really good advice, that. Yeah. Really good advice. Mate, you're top man. Thanks for coming on the pod. Oh, thank you I hope you enjoyed me. it. I did enjoy it. I loved it. Thank Thanks, you. mate. Top man. Mm -hmm.